Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to Prep Medic. I am super excited for this week's video because the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care just released new recommendations for tourniquets for the first time since 2004. So in this week's video, we're gonna be taking a look at all the tourniquets they just recommended. And we're also gonna take a look at a couple tourniquets that didn't quite make the cut. All right, so I wanna start this video off on the tourniquets that were just approved, and I'm gonna do a brief over overview of each one. I can't say that I'm gonna go in depth of any of these because to be completely honest with you, I only really have experience with the CAT and the Soft T Wide. Um, some of these other tourniquets I just got in the mail, played around with them a little bit, read the instructions, but I am by no means an expert in the use of these or folding or anything like that. So. Um, you know, I'm gonna give you a brief overview, but I'm not gonna go super in depth in them. So to give you guys a little bit of background, the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care is a group that's sponsored by the Department of Defense, made up of combat medics, physicians, and a lot of really smart people with a lot of real world experience in tactical medicine and trauma care. They get together and they do regular literature reviews of the trauma care that's out there and studies that have been done and they publish their results in an effort to kind of promote evidence-based medicine in trauma care. So they put out pretty much all the recommendations for commercial tourniquet use. And before last week, they had not done a review of tourniquets since 2004. And we really only had three main tourniquets that were recommended. Those were the CAT tourniquet, the soft T-wide, and then the EMT tourniquet, which is a pneumatic tourniquet. For today's video, I'm only gonna be talking about mechanical tourniquets. I'm not gonna be talking about any of the pneumatic tourniquets that they've recommended, just to keep it simple, and these are more of what I know. If you wanna take a look at the data they collected and stay on top of what their recommendations are, you can find everything the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care talks about on a website called Deployed Medicine. They kind of compile all of their data. They do quarterly literature reviews that you can read. Uh, they also have really quick study cards for recommendations in uh, tourniquet application, airway management. It's a great resource for you. And then they also have a podcast. So I'll leave a link to that down below. I do wanna tell you that I bought all of these with my own money. I am not sponsored by any company and I do not have any uh, financial ties to anything here. Uh, although I would not be opposed to a couple of these uh, sponsoring me. All right, so kind of starting with the tried and true and some of the older devices that have been approved since that 2004 timeframe, the cat tourniquet kind of remains my favorite, and I'll kind of tell you a little bit more about that as we go on the video. Uh, but the cat tourniquet is a really simple tourniquet. It's got a Velcro strap here that goes around the loop, you tighten it really tight on the limb, and then you tighten the windlass, put it in these brackets, and pull the time strip over. It's really simple to use. Um, some of the disadvantages with this are that it is hard to get really tight on the limb, and that's its biggest failure, is you can't, if you don't tighten it all the way down, you're gonna have trouble tightening the windlass to a point where it actually occludes blood flow. But all in all, the CAT tourniquet is one of the most prevalent tourniquets on the market. It's what pretty much every soldier is deployed with. Um, and then a lot of police officers carry these as well. It's what we carry on our ambulance as our primary tourniquet. So it is what I am most familiar with and which is one of the reasons I'm gonna continue to use this tourniquet. Uh, the CAT tourniquet is, I need to look at my cheat sheet. It comes in at $29 retail. You can get a discount if you are police, fire, EMS on North American Rescue's website. Do not be fooled with these. Do not buy these on Amazon because they are almost all counterfeit there and they will break when you try to put them on. They look really convincing. They look really similar. Just don't. Buy them straight from the manufacturer. That's really the only place um, that's really safe to buy these. So cat tourniquet's my favorite. Now the next one and tried and true and what I've been carrying for a while is the soft tee wide. The regular soft tee is no longer recommended by the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. Um, so the soft tee wide is just a little bit thicker and the thickness of a tourniquet is uh, actually really, really important because the thicker a tourniquet is, the lower the occlusion pressures are, which means that the less tight this has to be on an extremity to stop the blood flow. 
With that, you'll have less patient pain and you'll also have less tissue damage. So all of these tourniquets are about an inch and a half, a little bit more in some cases um, in thickness, which is really what you should be sticking with if at all possible. And for these approved tourniquets, they're all about that uh, dimension. Uh, some of the not approved tourniquets are not. So we'll kind of talk about why that's important. So the Softy Wide is very, very similar to the Cat Tourniquet. Couple big differences is you don't actually take this loop out of the buckle if you want to put it on a leg. It has a clip here that you can unclip uh, the loop from. And then instead of having Velcro, it has a friction lock when you tighten it. I personally do not care for the friction lock because it makes it a little bit harder to put on your extremity as you pull it, the entire tourniquet turns with you. So you have to either pin it with your arm, pin it with like the wall or the floor, whatever's around you. Um, and then tighten it. So it's just a little bit harder for self-application. Now I do carry this with me uh, on my everyday carry because this folds down a lot tighter than the cat tourniquet and that's really where this thing shines and I think still holds an advantage over all of these other options um, because it is such a good everyday tourniquet for that size comparison. Um, it is a little bit hard. You have to make sure you're practicing with whatever you have because uh, when you're applying this, it doesn't just sit in a bracket. The new Gen uh, 3, sorry, the new Gen 4 um, actually uh, has a bracket you put it in and then you put this triangle over the windlass. So it just takes a little bit of practice. It's a great device, but just be aware that if you're carrying this, you need to be practicing it regularly or you're not gonna be able to do it when you know, you're in that dire situation when you're bleeding out or shot. Uh, the Softy Wide, Currently comes in at $29.93. Um, that's off the uh, Tactical Medical Solutions webpage. Um, I don't know if they offer a discount, but uh, that's pretty par for a course for these two tourniquets. Uh, the new, and that is for the new Gen 4. Uh, this one is the Gen 3, so they're pretty similar, but you know, buy the newest version if you're going to get something. All right, moving down the list, and I should have talked about this earlier. This is the Gen 6 cap. It's not the Gen 7. Gen 6 is still approved, but they, you can't really buy these anymore, and they're saying just go to the Gen 7 as soon as these outlive themselves or you use them. The big difference is just the windlass. The windlass is a little bit thicker on the Gen 7 tourniquet. I don't know if you can see that, but the Gen 7 is just a, a little bit sturdier there, so I'd recommend just going with the latest thing. That being said, if you have the Gen 6, you don't have to throw it away or not use it. It's still acceptable at this point. In the same category as the Softy Wide and the Cat Tourniquet, we have the SAM Extremity Tourniquet. So this is the SAM XT. And this is made by the same company that makes the SAM Splint, which I've talked about earlier on this channel in my splinting video. It's a pliable splint that goes in your arm. It's a great product. They also make a pelvic binder that kind of follows the same principle as this. And this tourniquet surprised me because when I got it, it feels like a toy. It looks like a toy, but it actually has some really cool functional points to it that um, I think make this, for me, what I'm going to be teaching in my Stop the Bleed classes because it has some features on it that make it a lot easier for civilians to apply accurately. Now, the SAM XT comes in at $37.95, um, so it is a little bit more expensive. And really, on its surface and its usage is very similar to the Cat Tourniquet. It's got a Velcro strap down here. You apply it around the limb and you pull this off and tighten. Now the big difference with this is, is as you tighten this around the extremity, you'll notice that there's these holes on the strap. Once you get it to a uh, tightness that's acceptable for this tourniquet, so it's not too loose. Remember I was talking about how in the cat tourniquet, if you don't tighten it um, all the way down, the windlass isn't gonna be effective. Well, this will tell you exactly when you've reached that, and it will click, and it will lock this strap into place with two little prongs that pop out. Velcro it down, and then you turn the windlass just like you would with the cat tourniquet. Put the time strap over it, write the time, and you're done. Now, that feature with the tightness is amazing. Um, you know, it's a lot easier to teach a civilian or somebody that has no medical training how to tighten until you hear a click, then it is kind of a um, subjective, like, oh, just make sure it's tight. That doesn't work as well. So I really like this for that. 
That being said, I don't think I'm gonna be carrying these simply because this piece that clicks is just a little bit thicker than the um, cat tourniquet. It's one more piece uh, to potentially fail. There's no data on it failing or anything like that. Um, but you know, this is, I'm just a little bit worried about the potential for this and it's just one more thing I, I don't really wanna worry about. Um, you know, people in the medical field, if you have a lot of experience, you don't necessarily need that because you can kind of gauge how tight to uh, bring this tourniquet. There is one other windless style tourniquet that I did not have time to get shipped here and that is the TMT, the tactical mechanical tourniquet. It is very similar to the cat tourniquet. It just has a little bit of a different bracket for um, the windlass to slide into. And then it's also not Velcro. It has one of the uh, friction locks for the strap itself. So when I get that in, I will um, make sure we have a video on it or something like that. Uh, the TMT comes in at $29.95, so almost identical to the cat and the soft T wide. Now, the last category of tourniquet and one of the new styles that was approved by uh, the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care are these ratchet uh, tourniquets. Now, these ratchet tourniquets are very similar to like a snowboard binding, uh, if, if you're into snowboarding. This tourniquet here is the ratcheting medical tourniquet. This tourniquet is super simple to use. It has a friction lock here for the strap. You put it around the extremity. It's got ex uh, instructions right here. You pull that tight around the extremity, and then you grab this tab here to keep the tourniquet from turning, and you ratchet it down until you have cessation of blood flow. It works really well for uh, buddy application. If you're putting this on your own arm though, you actually have to bite this strap right here to keep it from turning, and that's what they recommend in their instructions. I found that to be kind of difficult. It's not saying you can't do it. It's not saying this is a bad device. Um, but it will take lots of practice. There, there's a theme here. You have to practice on whatever you're carrying. So with this one, I don't think I'm going to be carrying this either. Um, you know, it doesn't, it, it might be a little bit thinner than a flat folded uh, soft tee wide, but you have this buckle here that sticks up pretty far. And then you can bend that over and put that in a pouch like this. I'm a little bit nervous about perpetually bending this hard plastic here if it would develop wear. I have nothing to support that opinion. So, um, you know, if I haven't seen like a manufacturing uh, recommendation for it, but that is a possibility for storage if you are looking to make it a little bit smaller. Uh, pretty neat device. The uh, Ratching Medical Tourniquet, the RMT comes in at $36 a piece, uh, which, you know, we're, we're kind of seeing a theme. Everything's gonna be a little bit below $40 um, with some being a little bit cheaper, a little bit more expensive. The big advantage I see of this tourniquet is that when you're pushing this up, some people might not have the dexterity, maybe you have arthritis in your hands or just don't have the muscle strength to turn the windlass on like a cat or a soft tee wide because that does require a lot of pressure. With these ones, you've got a really good mechanical advantage with this ratchet and it's gonna be a lot easier for you to do in my opinion. To release this, it's really easy, you just pull that. Once it's really tight, this actually takes a lot of force to get that undone. All right, the last two tourniquets on the recommended list are the TX3 and the TX2. Now, these are made by the same parent company, even though they're uh, marketed different. This one's marketed from uh, RevMedX, and I'm not entirely sure about what some of the relationships between these companies are. I will do some research and get back to you on that. But this is very similar to this, down to the instructions on it. So this is the TX3, so it's a three inch strap here. And that's pretty cool because that means that you're gonna have much lower occlusion pressures for this tourniquet because it is so wide. Obviously you lose a little bit of compactness with this. Um, you can fold it over just like the other one, but once again, I'm a little bit worried about this hard plastic um, and having that bend or snap. The TX3 works almost identical to the ratcheting medical tourniquet. Um, it has the same instructions and everything. You put this around the extremity, you hang on to this loop, and you tighten down until it's tight on the arm or leg. If you're self-applying this to your arm, then you bite this and you tighten it down, and then you ratchet it until you have the cessation of blood flow. Now, while you do have really thick bands here, 
Um, that pressure isn't going to be quite as well distributed up here because your tension point is really right on this section. So you're going to have um, lower occlusion pressures here. It's going to be a little less painful. But I've noticed on both of these, you do get a little bit of pinching when you put that on because this does bunch up this fabric. So just be aware of that. You know, obviously patient comfort isn't our primary concern when we're dealing with massive hemorrhage. But especially for long-term uh, care, if maybe you're not right next to a hospital or you don't have the ability to get them to a hospital right away, just be aware that these might uh, cause some pain there and you might want to just try to avoid that pinching by lifting up a little bit as you apply it. This one does have a younger brother. It's the TX2, which is almost identical to the Ratching Medical Tourniquet. It's just a two inch strap down so it's just a little bit smaller. Both are approved, both work great. Um, you know, if you can carry it, I'd carry the thicker strap because that's gonna be a little bit more comfortable for your patients. The TX3 is the most expensive and this comes at almost $40. Uh, so just, you're paying for a little bit more fabric and you're paying for the ratcheting mechanism on this one. So these are all the tourniquets that were recommended by the Committee for Tactical Combat Casualty Care. They have not released the specific data on their literature review. They have not released that paper yet or published it. Um, that should be coming in the next week or two, and when it does, it will show up on that Deployed Medicines website. What you should be looking for there is they should be giving you complete criteria of what studies they included in this literature review and what they excluded and why. Um, so that should give all the information for what their criteria for these tourniquets is. Uh, so I'm kind of awaiting those. You know, I trust this committee because they're not a special interest group. They really have no stake in any of these tourniquets or brands. Um, so these are just their kind of unbiased opinions. They've had really good recommendations in the past. So let's talk about a couple tourniquets that are not recommended. And I have two categories of these tourniquets. I have one that I will still carry even though it's not recommended. And then I have two that I will probably throw in the trash and I feel a little bit bad because I even spent money on them just for this video. So the one tourniquet that you guys have seen me kind of talk about on this channel repeatedly is the SWAT T. This is the stretch wrap and tuck tourniquet. This is an elastic tourniquet that basically goes around the arm and you stretch it out every loop and it will occlude blood flow. It is not recommended by TCCC for a couple reasons. One, this is really hard for self-application, um, especially if it's bloody, you have any kind of moisture on this, it slips out of your hand. You need to practice with this a ton. Second, it's gonna take a little bit longer than all these other options to apply to the limb. So that's a big problem if you're bleeding out because every second that's delayed um, is a second that your patient's not gonna do as well. So if this has all these disadvantages, why do I carry it? Well, just because it's not um, COTCCC approved, it is still evidence-based and it has a lot of studies on it that show it is very effective at occluding blood flow. It's also multi-purpose, so you can use this as a pressure bandage along with a couple other uses as like slings and uh, things like that. So I carry this as more of an last resort EDC item. Uh, it's thick, so it has really, really low occlusion pressures and it's very comfortable for patients, uh, which is a big deal in some instances. Um, it's also very compact and cheap, so I can keep this in my pocket and it works pretty well. Now, this is not your best option. If you can carry one of these other recommended tourniquets, please do so. Um, but if you're going to carry something for EDC, I think this is your go-to choice um, as long as you practice with it a lot. A couple other advantages for this is that this will fit any size patient um, down to very, very small children. It is also recommended right now for canine TECC. This is their recommendation for a canine tourniquet. Um, it does work pretty well for that. So one really quick point about pediatric application of tourniquets. They've had a bunch of studies that have come out that show that cat tourniquets and soft T wides will be able to fit a majority of pediatric patients in elementary school. Now there are some exceptions to that and in those cases you can use the SWAT T uh, because this will fit any size patient. Now I will tell you that children that are that small or that young have really low mean arterial pressures, which simply means they've got low blood pressures in general, and they're gonna require less occlusion pressure to actually stop that bleeding. 
So generally speaking, a pressure bandage wrapped tight around a uh, kid's arm is going to be enough to stop that bleeding. But you can use this as a tourniquet option, and this is pretty quick to apply in those instances. So if you are worried about a very small child, I would recommend this tourniquet is what you carry for that. Now, the last two tourniquets I wanna talk about today, uh, and probably what's gonna get me the most dislikes on this video, are the rats tourniquet and the stat tourniquet. Um, okay, so the rats tourniquet came out uh, a number of years back. It's been around for a while, and it was developed by a special forces dude that saw some issues with the cat and wanted a tourniquet that worked. And the principle here is that you'd put this around a limb, you'd put this through, and then you'd wrap it multiple times. And the multiple wraps would give you that width that we were talking about with the tourniquets. This tourniquet has a bunch of issues, and I would never recommend anybody carry this. I feel bad that I even spent money to get this tourniquet to review. Um, because it is such a thin band, it has been associated with really, really high occlusion pressures and a lot of soft tissue damage. Um, so this is really actually harming your patients much more than these other tourniquets are. Second, they've had uh, one comparison study with this between the CAT and soft T wide. And you know a lot of people point to that study as like a positive for this because in the conclusion it's like, well, all three tourniquets can uh, stop bleeding pretty effectively. But if you really go and look at the numbers, this has much longer application times. It takes much longer for cessation of bleeding to occur with this tourniquet. And it has that uh, a lot more pain factor to it because it is such high pressures. Anecdotally, this comes off with patient movement. You drag a patient, you're moving them. Um, it comes out of this. They have a Gen 2 that's supposed to be a little better, but it really has not been demonstrated to work any better. Um, it really doesn't have any real advantages. Maybe it folds a little bit tighter than, say, the SWAT T, but if you're going to choose an, uh, an elastic tourniquet, stay away from this. It's just not a good device. It does not have the data to back it up. The business has done some pretty shady uh, practices in marketing this. You'll notice that some of these have like a TCCC approved. RATS tourniquets bought their own organization called US. TCCC, and they approved their own tourniquet so that they could say it was TCCC approved and basically mislead the public in that way. They've also purchased some domains that bring you right to their website. Um, just some practices that I think are ethically wrong. Uh, and this tourniquet just is not a good option for you. I would remove these from your kits altogether. All right, the last tourniquet we're talking about is the STAT tourniquet. And I got a bunch of questions on these a couple months back. I'm gonna tell you right up front, I need to be a little bit careful what I say about these guys because I have heard through the grapevine um, some well-known medical YouTubers that STAT has been threatening lawsuits to anybody leaving them bad reviews. Um, now, granted, I don't think they have any traction there because what I'm telling you is what I've seen in my opinion of these and then facts. I'm not just uh, slandering them or giving any uh, false information. So for one, these are completely unstudied. The company has not released them for Doppler trials or any kind of um, medical proving. This was literally a concept that was come out with and they put it into use and they really don't have much data to back it up. The company has been unable to supply any data either. Um, and that information comes from Crisis Med, which is a, uh, they've got an Instagram channel. And they did a study on these. They got 25 of them, and I think something like 22 failed. And they do not occlude uh, arterial blood flow to the legs very well at all. I would stay away from these at all costs. Um, they have no mechanical advantage, so it's really hard to get them really tight. They have a timer for an hour on them, but an hour doesn't mean anything. You know, we've heard the golden hour, but really there is no huge physiologic change that happens from 55 minutes to an hour and five minutes. So the golden hour is kind of false. So this really has no um, use. So I want to clarify the golden hour comment really quick because I know somebody's going to get upset. Um, Basically, in trauma care, the faster you get them to definitive care, the faster you get them to an OR and a trauma surgeon, the better the patient's going to do. 
So you want to keep that time as short as possible, but an hour, there is nothing special there. Never carry these. I, I, I would never carry these. Um, you know, they just do not work as they're advertised. Uh, I've had my own failures. I've tried them out on me and it's really hard to get the right pressure on your leg. You need to put a lot of force into it. They're exceedingly painful. They're pretty thin. You know, even the thinnest uh, tourniquet here, they're still a lot thinner than the ratcheting medical tourniquet. Um, so just, just be really cautious with these. And make sure you do your research. I would always recommend going with uh, COTCCC approved tourniquets. Um, you know, there's a lot of gimmicks out there. There's a lot of innovation too, but you should not be the one to trial these. There needs to be data. There needs to be things to support its use. You don't want to be trialing this on somebody the first time and being the first case review where you put it on somebody and they bled out. Go with proven devices. And I think that is something that's very hard for people to do, especially with all the ingenious marketing out there. I mean, you see a video with, with this and I, I was sold when I first saw it. Um, because they have such good marketing campaigns. Same with rats. So make sure you do your research, make sure there's data to support them. Guys, if you have any questions about anything I covered today, please leave them in the comments down below. I am super excited about all of these and really any of these are good options, except those. So any of these are good options. Um, make sure that you are getting something that works for you, whether that's, you know, you're looking more for price, whether you're looking for a feature that one of these has, um, you know, these are all good options for you and you're not wrong to go with any of them. Just make sure, like I've been preaching the whole time, that you are practicing with all of these devices because that is super important. Uh, you're in a stressful situation. You've been shot. Your buddy's been shot. You are not going to be thinking clearly. So you need to have that muscle memory that allows you to apply this even though you're in that heightened state. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below on this video. I really enjoy your feedback. Um, I'm super excited to be getting out of this area in the next month and actually having a studio to film in. That's gonna be much better for production value in general. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to the future of this channel and I will see you guys next week.